my creative friends, it's Casey. Welcome back. We are getting real close to being done with the Pocky Art Journal. Just a couple more spreads left and it'll be complete. I did have to take a couple of signatures out because this thing is so thick that I can't even close it now. So if I had to do two more signatures in here, there is absolutely no way. So. We are almost done, and then we will be able to move on to the next art journal, which is a shaker art journal. It's got beads and sequins and all kinds of cool stuff in this little window pocket here. But I'll talk more about that when we get there. For now, we are going to do a spread. This um, is just a little, it's a tiny short little page here. So it's going to be interesting having such a discrepancy between the sizes of the pages not anything I haven't done before but it always creates um, some challenges this I had done some stamping around the edge and you can still see that through here I did gesso it with the gesso with the baking powder added because we're going to be using watercolors today this is our color palette. It's a nice fall color palette. Even though it's July, I really kind of start thinking about fall. Not quite yet, but pretty soon. We're not going to do any kind of fall theme today, but we are going to do some repeating leaf shapes. And I didn't intend it to be this way, but that's kind of some of the shapes in here. So that'll work out all right. Unfortunately, this stamping is purple. Doesn't really go with the color theme, but maybe it'll get covered up enough that nobody's going to notice anyway. So I've got my Ganzai Tambi watercolor paints. And I did buy some new brushes. So I got this set of brushes by Graby. They're synthetic squirrel hair brushes and they're really nice um, just a little bit of cool water took all the glue out so you don't have to soak them but they still come to a nice clean point so hopefully the bristles will stay in because the last set of brushes that I had gotten they were bamboo brushes um, and the bristles fell out all over the place and I couldn't even use them I was constantly picking bristles out of my work, so we'll see how these go. I have high hopes for them. So let's get started. I'm not going to lay down any color in the background. I'm just going to pick a brush. And we will start. Probably would help to put some water in my paint. We're going to start with this yellow ochre. going to make some leaf shapes. So we'll start with just tip of the brush and then press and then let up on the pressure. Ooh, that, that, that looks really nice. That turned out good. And no bristles left behind. Yay! So we'll do some more. We're just going to do some repeating shapes by repeating patterns you can make some really interesting pictures and that's basically all we're going to do is kind of repeat some shapes today and see what we can make I really don't have a plan I'm just doing whatever feels good in the moment. I'm not one of these artists that has all of my stuff together all the time. In fact, it's quite the opposite. I'm an experimental artist and I just kind of play around with ideas and see what happens. I think we'll have 
So I'm going to go off the page here. My life is kind of a big experiment. I don't know about you guys, but I don't know what I'm doing a lot of the time. So that's kind of how I approach my art too. I just, you know, do whatever. And because of that, I've, I've kind of led an interesting life. Okay, I think we have enough of the yellow ochre. And I'm going to pick a smaller brush, I think, and we'll do some orange. So because I've never really had a life plan, it's kind of freed me up to be able to do all kinds of things. Um, I've done, gosh, I coached gymnastics, I've coached cheerleading, I had a dance studio for a real brief amount of time before my body gave out on me. Um, I had a, I had an online children's clothing consignment shop. I was in a cover band. What else have I done? Oh, I was a lay minister for a while. I've done all kinds of really interesting things. Because I don't really have any sort of plans for my life and I just go with the flow. I've never been afraid to take on something new. It does mean that I don't know what I'm doing a lot of the time, which, you know, is kind of terrifying. <laughs> but it can be really rewarding. I always wanted to be a dancer, and I never really had the opportunity to take too many dance classes. And, um, you know, I kind of taught myself a lot, which honestly I've done for a lot of things in my life. I've taught myself a lot of art techniques, and I taught myself how to, you know, coach gymnastics and... You know, I had a I had a little help along the way, but not as much as not as much as I should have. So when I was in my late thirties, I decided I was going to enter a dance competition for the first time in my life. And again, I have not had any real formal dance training. I had some classes, but not a lot. I did take some dance in college, but because I had gotten such a late start with dancing, it wasn't something that, you know, I pursued professionally or anything like that. And that was mostly ballet that I took. I took ballet and modern dance in college. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that one was going to bleed too much into the yellow, but I th think it is dry enough. Okay, yep, that's pretty good. So, I, <laughs> I um, had a student, I was teaching an after-school dance program and I had a student who wanted to enter dance competitions. And so I helped her do that. And I thought, I'm going to do it too, just because I've always wanted to. And we'll just go and see what happens. And I will tell you, it is it was the absolute scariest thing I ever did in my whole entire life. For the first time in my life, I seriously considered just running away when it was almost my turn to go on stage. 
but I didn't. I faced my fear and I did it. And I went on to do um, competitions for a couple of years. You know, was I spectacular at it? No, not really. But I was improving by the time I was done and I had to be done because my body gave out. But if I hadn't done it, you know, I would be on my deathbed when I'm 85 years old thinking, oh, I wish I had done this. And even though I kind of look back and go, wow, I kind of sucked, you know, I did it. It's something that I actually did. And that's really cool. It's the same thing when I joined a cover band. I did that. When was that? Five or six years ago now. It was a little terrifying because, I mean, I'm used to performing. I've always been in concert bands, but a cover band is a whole different ball of wax. And not only that, but they made me sing a couple of times. Uh, I am not a singer. I play the flute and I picked up the mandolin while I was in the cover band too. But I had to sing and that was absolutely terrifying. But I did it. Like never in a million years would I have thought that I would be in a cover band and singing. But I did it and it was so fun. It was one of the best times of my life. And I'm so glad that I didn't let my fears get the best of me. And I had that experience, and I really miss it. But because of COVID, you know, we stopped playing for a while, and then for reasons I didn't go back. But I will always remember it very, very fondly. So this is kind of how I live my life, and this is also how I do my art. And I, I'm not going to lie, there are plenty of times in my life when I have done things, and plenty of times in my art when I've done things and completely crashed and burned. You know, not everything turns out. You don't like how everything turns out. Sometimes you look back on things and go, ooh, I could have done that so much better. But the point is, you, you did it. You know, you tried and you learn from it. And even if it's not something that you're going to keep doing, it's a valuable experience. So I have had people, of course, because this is just the nature of art, who, people who don't like my art. And, you know, that's, that is totally fine. Art is super subjective. Not everybody's going to like it. You know, uh, you're not even going to like your own art sometimes. I mean, that's the thing with art. You, you create a lot of art, and if you like half of it, then you're doing a spectacular. But the point is just to learn from what you're doing. And I'm not here creating masterpieces. I'm an experimental artist. I like to try new things all the time. So I'm not, like, I'm not a master at anything, I'm an adventurer. And that means sometimes things are not going to turn out, sometimes things are going to be a total mess, but you know what? That's totally fine, that's all part of the adventure. pretty good. No bristles. Not a single bristle was lost. And that is spectacular. I'm kind of liking this. Okay, now what do I want to do next? Okay, so my watercolors don't go really much darker than this and I am honestly just too lazy to mix colors. I really hate mixing colors. I always run out or I make way too much or, you know, and then it's a pain to try to get the same color mixed up again. So, okay, we are going to call that good with the watercolors. And I think we will go with, what color is this? It's a brown, dark burgundy. Really. 
that's a hard color to replicate. Let's see, I'm looking at my swatches for my watercolor pens here. This rose gold might be okay. I think that might work. All right, now I gotta find it. I think this is going to work out okay. Yeah, I really have no idea where I'm going with this. I often don't. The point for me of art journaling is to let go, to listen to my intuition more, to trust myself more. Because I used to do what I call gallery art, where, you know, you have an idea in mind, you have a photo for reference, you know, you have a specific picture that you want to make. And then you go to work making that picture. And I, I did that for a lot of years, but honestly, I didn't enjoy it. I found it really stressful because, you know, it had to look like something. And I found myself getting tighter and tighter with my style, trying to get all the details and everything right, and it just... I dreaded it after a while. I dreaded making art. Like, my daughter, she does digital drawing, and she she's incredible. She does all this realistic stuff, and her perspective is just amazing, and she draws people a lot, and the detail she gets is is amazing and she works hours and hours on these drawings and they're they're really cool and she likes doing that and like yay good for her but oh my goodness I could not do it absolutely not it's oh my gosh so tedious and I just I can't I can't do that kind of thing I don't have the patience for it I want to make something that is interesting and exciting, but does not stress me out. And I really wanted to learn how to be looser with my style, and I couldn't do it. I could not just let go and just be loose with it. So about a year ago, I decided to stop doing traditional art and start art journaling so that I could play and experiment. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. And just learn to let go. Cause I've been a perfectionist my whole life and it has not served me very well. <laughs> It just stresses me out. So now I play and I may return to gallery type art at some point, but it's definitely not going to be the same kind of thing. Like it'll be more abstract, it'll be looser, it'll be more fun and less stress. But for now, I'm just playing. But of course, playing means that sometimes things are going to look good and sometimes they're not. 
but all of it's okay. I like the happy little accidents. This this second line I'm putting up here was a happy accident because I originally was going to make this line a little thicker and then I started going off the line and I thought, well, I'll just keep going with it. And really, I like it. I'm glad I did that. It adds interest for sure. I'm speeding up the video here because watching me draw is really, really boring. It's much better in fast motion. Oops, forgot one. Get that leaf finished. So I'm done with my watercolor pen. Next, I'm going to take my ink pen and do some more leaves. I started out with a size six ink pen, but because of the baking powder in the gesso, I was having a hard time getting it to get a solid line. So I ended up having to go with a brush pen. And I'm making some patterns in the leaves just for interest and for fun. And that kind of pushes everything else into the background too, so it gives it a little bit of a focal point. And I'm adding circles just because, I don't know why, I really like circles with leaf shapes. I don't know if it's because like circles are organic and leaves are organic. I'm not really sure why. I just like circles and dots and they seem to go well with leaves. So hey, why not? We'll just put them in here. Draw what you like. I mean, it's your art, do whatever you want with it. That's a cool thing. There are no rules. Nobody can tell you what to do with it. Your art's a reflection of you. Okay. I don't think I want to add too much more to this because it'll be too busy. So I think I think what I'm going to do is just add my word to it and we'll call that good. All right. We're going to stamp our word on here. Oh, it's off center, that's why. That one's a little bit crooked. That's fine. Certainly do not have to be perfect. That's pretty nice. Of course, it's not very dark, so we'll have to go over it with some ink. usually do this when I stamp things anyway. Just to make it crisper and cleaner looking. Just 
just have to decide where we're going to put it. I don't normally put things right in the center like that, but that's okay. Because this page is so much smaller, I think it balances okay. So we'll just ink up the edges a little bit. I'll do a brown instead of a black. Just to bring in some of this darker color that's supposed to be burgundy or whatever, but it's kind of brown. I think that turned out pretty nice. Nice and simple, but definitely cool. Thanks for listening to me babble and I hope you had fun creating today. I know I did. I'll see you next time.